Hello and welcome back. It has been a little while since we've had some good tournament action, but we are well into it again. We are into Legend of the Stars qualifying tournament number three. So huge thanks to Legend of the Stars for sponsoring this. Huge thanks to everyone helping organize. And well, if you're not familiar with what the Legend of the Stars tournament is, is well, it is a four-part qualifying followed by a big final tournament at the end of the year to determine who is the Forged Alliance Forever champion for 2017 last year Miffy took it out this year we're looking for a new champion we're going to see how it is so we've had two qualifiers down already we've got a bunch of places already given out to our contestants we've got three or four more to give out today depending on how everybody gets along we've got a whole action-packed lineup for you guys first of all though we're going to head over to well it looks like Nexus playing Whiteheart which is Patrick this is going to be a tip-top high-level matchup, very start of the tournament, interesting to see. We can have some great action coming your way. All right, without any further ado, we're going to head over to Desert Planet 2. We're going to gate down and find out who is going to be on top of this one. All right, and let's go. We have got... In the, well, brown corner, we could say. It is none other than Nexus of Reality. He has opted for UEF this time around, so we're going to have a big cheer for him because that is some people's favorite faction. He's going to throw down that first land factory. What is the plan here? He's not actually queued up those core mixes yet. I expect we'll see that in just a second. While well, he's going to probably rush over to the Hydro, the lack of planning for that ACU probably means simple Hydro rush for him. Down here in his <laughs> in the opposite corner, we have got Whiteheart, not playing in white of course. He's going to throw down that land factory, but we can see a little bit of a mix up here from him compared to what Nexus is doing. He's going to throw down a first power generator. Then he's going to get those core mixes underway. Perhaps it's going to give him a little bit of a leg up. I'm a little bit concerned that Nexus isn't going to be spending quite enough in the immediate term, uh, but he has put a fix to that. He was just a little bit late to the party with his commands. So we can see he has done the same thing. He does have that first power generator. So these guys are pretty good with their standard meta, and they're going to get those engineers out and get that hydro underway very soon, soon to be followed after that by an air factory to give them a little bit of scouting and maybe a little bit of aggressive air capability. Looks like Petrick is going to be the first one away with a little bit of a raiding party. So that's going to sacrifice the amount of engineering power that he's got back at base. Just in the short term, we can see just the two engineers, the third one rolling off just now. That's going to be slightly behind the expansion. Well, that's pretty much even, isn't it? But Zoc sorry nexus was a little bit less focused on getting those raiding units out early so we can see the hydro and a total of three tech one power generators and that's going to get the air factory all underway we can see engineering assisting that acu it looks like the most likely scenario here is that these raiding parties are going to run smack into each other and that is going to come down to purely the micro of who is going to come out on top we can see just in the distance here these guys coming towards each other this is probably the most exciting thing happening on the map just at this time so let's just follow these guys along i could probably use the tracking command but i'm not going to we're just going to roll on and they do have radar with them so they will have seen how that is going and that is a nice pickup there to petrick he completely obliterates that little raiding party from nexus and he runs away still with how much is that 40 hp on that hunter nexus keeping an eye on him with that air scout but it does mean that the engineer up here is actually going to be blocked and what do you know nexus is going to pull that ng back he doesn't know quite what to do with them right now not actually issuing much in the way of commands at all it won't be until the striker gets out and can provide a little bit of support to that engineer that it's going to be able to get out and do its expansion duty over on this side, we have a similar scenario, though, because Petrick actually forgot to bring a hunter out this way, so no amount of micro really is going to help that mole take out the mech marine that opposes it. He's just going to skirt around the outside, keeping in radar range so he knows where that is from Nexus, but not trying to make a move just yet and letting the Mantis roll in and take care of it. 
we can see Petrox actually split up the scout and Hunter over here. That's an interesting move. That's going to keep at least one of them alive because Nexus is probably going to chase down just the one. And we've got the same thing happening over here. The Mech Marine just running away from this Mantis, trying to keep itself alive. Nexus, of course, is aware of what is happening because the scout is there. So unfortunately, no engineers that he was able to pick up there. The engineer for this side was slowed down a little bit for Nexus, but not a huge amount. It would have been absolutely fantastic if one of these guys had been able to get in there, take out an engineer that was expanding and caused a minute or so's delay in the expansioneering plans for their opponent. It looks like Nexus was doing reasonably well in the air game. He had enough interceptors to ward off the air from Petrick that was floating overhead. But if we look at the counts now, there's three, four interceptors there for Nexus and a fourth one rolling out. So both of these guys tied at four interceptors apiece. So it would come down to the micro as to who would be able to do that. Looks like Petrick is a little bit faster with the expansion from the ACU he's wandered out here. We can see this is actually a reasonably nice landscape. It could be a good place for a holiday, but he's going to instead build some mass extractors, get a little bit more eco up and running. He was a little bit faster than Nexus to the punch. Nexus only just approaching now. So these guys still very neck and neck. The Ecos, well, Whiteheart looking at 25 mass per tick to the 19, and that'll be due to these extra mass extractors that he has already been able to claim. But the actual time difference in both of these guys' expansion plans and maneuvering around is actually very, very little. Although the ACU having to stop for a moment to come and deal with this pesky Mantis before renewing his build on that. So Petrick just trying to harass. He's actually got a pretty good stream of Tech 1 units rolling out of the factories. And they are headed across to the other side of the map, causing a little bit of problem potentially in the future because Nexus's units are reasonably spaced out. He's got a good clump of strikers over here, but they are not going to be able to catch up to Mantis at all if those Mantis slip by and make it through into the main base. And we can see that it's two on one, and Petrick actually playing this very, very well with similar unit count. He's actually going to come out with a bit of an advantage because he is maneuvering just that little bit better. Looks like Petrick isn't aware that there's a big clump of strikers over that side. He probably needs a little bit more in the T1 air scout game. He's going to run those guys straight into a whole stack of strikers, and that's going to lose any advantage that he did have. So he did have a small advantage in terms of speed and the ability to slip through with a couple of those mantas into the base, but unfortunately running smack into a squad of strikers is not the way to utilize a few mantas. We've got a little bit of a raid. These guys, mm, I was hoping for Petrick's sake they might be able to take out their mass extractor. But unfortunately, it is just another case of a couple of Mantis up against a slightly superior number of Strikers. And down go those Mantis to no avail. So Nexus managing to mop everything up pretty well as he runs around the outside of his territory with those Strikers and just manages to pick up all of that annoying stuff that Petrick has thrown out, although Petrick does actually own the center of the map, so there's a little bit of reclaim, there's a couple of extra mass extractors, and we can see now there is a point defense, which will make it a little bit more difficult to take that center, at least until some Tech 1 artillery rolls along. It looks like Nexus might actually not be aware that there are a couple of Mantis. Let's just have a quick look from his perspective. And he does have radar on those, but he's moving the ACU away, which is interesting. Leaving those engineers and those mass extractors quite vulnerable. And there we see his mistake. He's corrected it now. He's going to bring the ACU back on up. I wouldn't be surprised if he loses one mass extractor, but it is not the end of the world. He should be able to deal with this. He does have... Well, quite a few units, but actually there's only one striker in that mix. So, uh, two strikers now. Not really the unit superiority that he wants. He is going to have to rely on that ACU to mop it up for him. After all the fighting over on this right-hand side, Nexus has actually come away with a pretty good superiority in terms of unit count. He's easily got more than enough to punch through right here but the ACU will be the one to stop him. So whether he wants to try and capitalize on that and risk all of those units, well, we have to wait and see, but probably not would be my guess because he doesn't want to throw away that advantage that he has right now. Nexus just 
finishing. Well, he's got a couple of waters queued up and forgot to kill that Mantis, but he has rectified that and he's finished off the job. We have got a couple of engineers out on gunships now. So Nexus on the tippy top of his reclaim game because he is doing an absolute beast job of getting engineers out to that reclaim. Let's have a look at where those spots are. Wow, I say that, but there's no engineers in here. They've all been killed off. That is most unfortunate. But he does have engineers on transports, and he can get those out. Are there any similar moves for, for Petrick? Well, there are, but it looks like he's taking the assault option instead of the engineering option. And he's actually going to throw a bunch of Mantis on that. And where are they going to go? It looks like they're going to try and squeak through there. They will be picked up on radar and, I think, on vision range, perhaps, as they shoot through there. Has Nexus spotted that? I think he may have because we see the tanks moving on back a little bit. An interceptor out though. The reaction comes there from Nexus that is going to come in and start laying down fire. Well, very, very slowly. I think they'll nab the transport, but I'm not sure they'll get the units. It looks like they uh, did not get away. It was a bit close. That transport just took way too long to land for Petrick, and unfortunately, he was not able to capitalize on it. In terms of tech upgrading though, we can see that there are some Tech 2 engineers already out on the field and Pill is rolling out now for Nexus. So he has got his Tech 2 economy well underway. How many Tech 2 mass extractors has he got? We can see a couple of them dotted around. So he's doing a little bit of upgrading there. In terms of generated eco though, let's have a look at that. We've got 61 to 59, so very, very little in it at this point. Nexus just trying to capitalize on his slight air advantage at the moment with some of those Tech 1 bombers. Have we seen a Tech 2 shift as well over here? Well, yes, we have. We've got our Tech 2 land factory. That power generator is well, about 40% complete by the looks of it. Well, actually, that's the second one that's going up. So a reasonably early shift there. That gives Patrick a nice bump in power. Let's just switch to the scoreboard. There's a 1.3k apace. Now that this has finished over here for Nexus. So Nexus is just rolling those pillars out from the factory not really utilizing them too much at the moment he really needs to get those with the front line we can see he did actually roll some lobos in to take care of that point defense so he will be taking the center which means those two mass extractors will be available to him now but he has lost out on all the reclaim that was originally in the center there we can see that Petrick is moving to intercept he's got a decent squad of mantis coming in those guys will be more than sufficient to deal with it should they choose to pursue it but it looks like he's having second thoughts about the how valuable that is or how maintainable it is given that nexus's acu is right there continued skirmishes down on the right hand side we've got a squad of strikers and a squad of mantis facing off with each other looks like petrick is opting for the hit and fade tactics a little bit more trying to get behind enemy lines and cause as much damage to the eco as he can nexus very much playing the defensive game at the moment we have seen very very little in terms of actual incursion over onto Petrick's side of the map from Nexus. He's got a bunch of Tech 2 pillars now, which are going to help the cause a lot. But still, it has been Petrick's game thus far. He's got a four mass advantage. But let's have a quick look at the totals. We've got about 2,000 mass extra in total income to Petrick. We can see engineers being landed up on the plateau here. And it looks like he might have forgotten to give those some orders. There we go. The orders go down now. So we see the exact same approach. Grab those mass extractors and get a little bit of point defense. But we can see the Petrick, uh, <laughs> Petrick's tactics here are paying off. He's going to come back. He's going to scoop up this mass extractor as long as he pauses long enough to finish wrecking the HP on that thing. In comes a couple of pillars on a transport for Nexus. Unfortunately, a little bit too slow, and they're just out of range. Now, those things are going to have to try and chase down those Mantis, which is not a good proposition. Unfortunately, he has wasted a little bit of APM with that, which is not something we usually see from these guys. We would expect them to pick it up pretty well. And down goes an engineer. Probably, yes, it does get finished off. So the NG is no more. What happened to this raiding party? There was an attack on the right, on the left-hand side here, and it looks like the rhinos that are coming out now from Petrick were able to finish off those pillars, and that's done nothing except leave a chunk of reclaim. We can see there is 160 mass for the, that pillar wreck, and that is going to go straight into Petrick's 
coffers. So that is a little bit unfortunate for Nexus not being able to capitalize on the first real push that he's had. He's going for another one now. He has taken out the point defense. There is a Rhino. How many pillars are in this mix? Oh, that's not a good good mix of pillars in there because there are zero so that is going to lose very badly to just a couple of rhinos we can see this one rhino just trailing behind laying down damage if he's fast enough he might be able to get in here and do some damage to the eco but he really needs a bit more firepower in his assaults to really make them count we can see there is now a counter assault up on the left here there is just Mantis though, it looks like the Rhinos were not part of that, so those Mantis are going to run into some Strikers, maybe be able to take out a little bit of Eco, so this Mass Extractor probably going to go down, these Engineers probably going to get picked off as well, so again just doing a little bit of damage around the periphery to Nexus, it looks like the plan here for Petrick is just to... <laughs> Well, I was going to say something, but I'm going to change it because there is now a Loyalist on the field, so it's going to be to out tech. We've got 81, 79 mass per tick to Nexus, and the 55 to Petra. What is going on? Is that a power stall? It certainly is not a power stall. So that is actually just a big focus there from Nexus on getting that T3 Eco. Well, actually, is there any T3 Eco? No, it's going to be all tech too, but he's just going to get a whole lot more mass extractors up to T2. He needs to make sure he can defend them, though. But while that has been going on, the T3 upgrade has happened on Petrick's side of the fence, and there are a couple of loyalists rolling around the field, and those guys are going to be very, very difficult for these pillars to deal with we can see nexus just pulling the pillars back there's absolutely no point at all in throwing them up against the loyalists they're just going to get eaten alive have we seen a tech 3 shift we have the factory is actually completed and we can see is that the first percival it looks like it is the first percival rolling off the line that's probably going to jump straight on this tech 2 transport over here and go out to meet the loyalist head on that loyalist meanwhile is going to start ripping into the base we can see that first mass extracted going down a few pillars really roaming around not sure what to do if they try to defend they will get absolutely eaten if they try and attack they will also get eaten there's not a lot of options well they could always run and be labeled traitors to the uef and i'm not sure that would be well received at all the engineers going down before they can finish off that triad very sad for nexus that is not quite what he wanted oh no oh, i thought for a second the triad was firing but it was actually just pillar fire so no the triad definitely not working out for nexus all right how are we going in terms of percival count we are at one we've got one percival a second one though is not too far from being completed that extra eco that nexus has been investing in is definitely going to start paying off so on board it goes it is going to head straight on that transport get out here nexus screening with interceptors because he's got to keep that alive just thought for a second perhaps there was a first percival that landed from that other transport but no it does not look like that is the case here we go percival down on the floor spinning around and out goes that alpha strike and boom it hits one of those loyalists in the face leaving 280 hp it is finished now so this one percival is going to come in and save the day as long as he doesn't let that that loyalist get out of range that is going to be very close 575 left though even if he does get out of range those gunships will be able to finish it off though still very defensive game here for nexus and he's finding himself under tech one bomber assault so Petrick definitely taking advantage of the gap in airplay while everything is happening over the right hand side so he is finding himself just taking quite a lot of damage actually very effective i'm not sure the nexus has really spotted what's going on because he has not brought his interceptors into play is he gonna deal with that with some tech one aa i think he may have given up no he hasn't given up there we go tech one aa going down reasonably slowly from the acu it'll be able to eat some of the hp off those bombers but wow he is losing tech two mixes to tech one bombers just 178 hp that is going to go down on the next pass which is now so that is a reasonably substantial loss for a very small investment on Petrick's part there was only half a dozen tech one bombers and he has done a lot of damage finally though nex is bringing in some tech one interceptors to deal with those 
A whole stack of loyalists are rolling in. Now Nexus is going to have to be a little bit careful here because those loyalists are a bit more dangerous than the tech one that he has been facing off. He does have a Percival to help and there is another Percival rolling in. So between the two of those, they will help that ACU stay alive. I should expect there's still five loyalists and remember there is stun on those loyalists i'm not sure that nexus is going to be able to get out of here ah the stun is so real that has absolutely taken its toll the percival going down nexus down into the red he totally underestimated that and he goes down to the five loyalists and we can see the comment there that stun wow well played to Petrick, and he manages to kick Nexus down into the bottom bracket in the very first match of the game. That is not quite what I expected. I did think Nexus would be able to deal with that and hold out a little bit longer. He was definitely playing the longer game. He was investing more in Eco. He had his Percivals up if he could have got a decent, well, production of Percivals happening oh what if unfortunately it was not to be and Petrick has taken out this first match against Nexus well done